let's let's do this okay uh let's try something interesting okay with with the min only i mean it will convey you the idea but it will be slightly different okay uh, so let's let's take instead of min x y let's take min 2 x y okay fine i mean min x y is already there in the video so you know let's do something else okay Have you all understood? The, qu the question is clear. Okay. Now let me give you some endowments. Okay. And what you have to do is find all efficient allocations and find all the competitive equilibrium. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. So so let's see. Take two three two zero zero three. Okay. Now first of all. You know, can you tell me what would be the competitive equilibrium in this? Just by looking at it. So one 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 two or one two one one something like that. Uh, okay. Uh, so you're giving me allocation, or are you giving me prices or allocation? Competitive allocations. Okay, solve it then. Okay, first first find efficient allocations. And then find a competitive equilibrium, and then I'll tell you how to do it. Okay, so tell me what are the efficient allocations in this case? Okay, so do you agree that these are Pareto efficient? All of you are getting this? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Okay, so these are set of all efficient allocations. Okay. And what is the competitive equilibrium? So clearly, you know, I mean, this is the endowment, right? This is where two zero zero three. Uh, so this is where the endowment is. Okay. Now, uh, you know, so there are actually three possibilities. Both prices are positive. If both prices are positive, then in that case, the budget line will look like this, right? And if the budget line looks like this. Consumer one will choose this point. Okay. And consumer two will choose this point. So obviously, you know, uh, uh, if you see there is, uh, there is an excess demand for Y. Okay. There is an excess demand for Y and there is an excess supply of X. So clearly that's not market clearing. Have you all understood this? Can you see why there is an excess demand for Y? Because individual one demands this much amount of Y and individual two demands this much amount of Y. So if you sum them, it is bigger than the total length of the box, total height of the box. Is that okay? Yes or no? So if there is excess demand for Y, you know, which way are you gonna go? Are you going, are you gonna go towards PY equal to zero? Or are you gonna go towards P x equal to zero.
px equal to zero, right? Because there is excess demand for y. You are not going to make the price of y zero. There is already excess demand. So if you're going to make price of y zero, you know, of course, it will stay excess in excess. So if you reduce it to zero, then the budget line looks like this. Okay, so if you reduce Px to zero, okay, so Px is zero and Py is one. Okay, so this is a case where Px is zero, Py is one. Of course, in this case, you know, we have an equilibrium because, uh, because this is the IC of one, the highest possible IC given the budget line. And this is the highest possible IC of Two given the budget line. So clearly there is this region where both the individuals are maximizing their utility and all these points are feasible. So that means the market clears. So all these are competitive equilibrium. Okay, uh, so let me just write it. Okay. So what are the set of all competitive equilibrium allocations? Well, of course, price is zero, PX is zero, PY is one. Okay, so this is a price. Okay, and there are lots of allocations which are competitive equipment allocation at these prices. Okay, which one are those? Well, they are of course in the in the feasible uh, region. Okay, so that means they are in the Azure box. Okay, and what are these allocations? These are the allocations where Y1 is zero. Okay, Y2 is three. Okay, fine. And X1 is what? X1 is between zero and point five. Point five, yeah. That's it. These these are all competitive equipment allocations and uh, those were the prices okay uh, so when i have a doubt yes so interestingly like x is the scarce commodity here but it turns out that the price of x is turning out to be zero that is what happens that is what happens when uh, you know you try and generalize uh, by looking at you know one problem all the time they have been asking and if that happens, almost everyone will get this problem. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you why you know your logic is not correct. Okay. So, so, I agree, X is here, okay. but if you really think about the utility function, X is not square, it is actually Y which is here. The requirement for Y is Right. Because y equals to 2x for so both, both individuals want to ice the amount of it. Yeah. You think about it when it comes to want, it comes to want, desire. You know, in terms of desire, y is desired in twice as much quantity as x is. Okay? Right. And if you think about it in those terms, y is not x. Interesting. Okay. So, sir, so because we have like two units of uh, X, uh, we actually really require four units of Y as in terms of the want or the desire, and we just have three, so that creates an excess uh, demand. Absolutely. So, if, if I replace this by five, then price of Y will be zero. Okay. Got it. Got it, sir. Okay. So, I mean, you know, if you're going to give thought to these kind of problems, trust me, you will learn so much and you'll learn so many patterns. I mean, the thing is that I cannot teach you all the patterns, you know, because it's sometimes you ask me, so I tell you, you know, but it's not possible. You know, first you have to actually 
solve so many problems to actually understand those patterns okay and then once you understand those patterns you will be able to solve the problems quickly okay uh, so i would strongly encourage you to solve as many problems as you can i mean that's the best way to learn things okay is that fine don't memorize solutions understand how to solve problems and then these kind of logic comes automatically okay and you know the one that i just told you you know twice if i change the utility functions let's say u1 is something else and u2 is something else so right now u1 is min of 2xy and u2 is let's say min of x comma 2y then things will be very different okay so don't again don't generalize these things try and understand first and then apply them are you getting my point make sense okay okay then let's let's uh, uh stop here for today uh and uh, just do a lot of practice okay the more practice you'll do the better you'll become at problem solving there is no shortcut okay uh, so do lots of problems we have provided you lots of problems now i've also told you how you can construct your own problems you know so uh, so solve as many problems as you can if you're short you know ask me i'll give you more okay okay then see you on sunday